Hello everyone, today I'm just going to go over how to make some of the more complex contours, specifically this roof section uh, on the B-17. Now this technique can be applied to almost any contour that you need, very helpful for wings, again cockpit enclosures, doors, uh, whatever you need that has complex curves. Uh, and what I mean by that is a curve that goes in two different directions. So we have a curve going this way, and a curve going this way. Real quick, I'm just going to open up this part, and I'll sort of show you how I did this. Um, I'm still not done with this part or the assembly, uh, but for now I figured it is good enough and it gives me the correct shape. You go over here and you look on the left, um, it's not too complicated just looking off of that. But what I actually did is I organized it into a folder, otherwise it becomes terribly messy and very long. Now the first thing that I did, I went through here, I'm just going to show you all of these contours. I made each one of these planes based off of the drawing, and then on each plane I have a contour sketch. Um, now the easiest way to sort of demonstrate this is if I grab this little blue bar down here, which unfortunately you can't see because uh, of YouTube and how this is recording. But if you grab this bar here and you move it up, it actually suppresses everything below it. Because the way SolidWorks works is it goes to the first thing and it does the first thing in the list, goes to the second, and so on, all the way down. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these planes. I'm just going to show you my first sketch. It was sort of the outline from the top. This represents the side of the, the plane, the side of the part. And then here is going to be the leading edge. Um, and I actually changed around a little bit. That's actually based off of some reference planes. But this is the contour that I actually want to use. Uh, you can see right there, um, I added a little bit of a round to the front. Uh, and it's actually on a plane that's slightly below my reference plane, if you can see that. Then I added my longitudinal lines. Uh, now I'm just gonna hide the leading edge here, the assembly. That's going to define all of my planes uh, that I make the contour on. Uh, then I made the transverse lines. I only did half of it. It's not worth doing both halves because we can just mirror it using the front plane here, right? You can just do one half and then mirror it over to the other side. It saves you a lot of time. You only have to do half the work. So now I have those lines and those will define planes too. And then I made my first contour uh, on my front plane. So that gives me my first uh, sort of dimensioned curve. All right. You can see it meets perfectly with my leading edge down there. Although I don't have a contour back here, it would meet perfectly up with that as well. And then I made my plane for the transverse B, and I put a sketch on it, labeled B, as you can see there. And I did that with all of these sketches. I don't want to show each and every one of them, just because it would take so long, but you get the idea. So I made these transverse sections all the way down to here. having a little bit of trouble zooming here, but then you will get just these transverse lines, but in order to make this a complex curved surface, you also have to have sections going this way. Now if I was actually going to go and do that, that's what all of these planes here are for. Um, and that's actually what I used to make the feature. Uh, it's my boundary surface. All of those are hidden under 
my boundary surface. Now these lines here, I just use these to define the other lines, if that makes sense. So once I have all of these, you can see each one of these has a little point right there uh, associated with a dimension. Now what I did is if you go down here, I'll just show one right here in the middle. Now if I show you that contour, zoom in right here, it perfectly meets this contour at that point and this contour at that point. And for every single one of these contours, it matches up perfectly. Now you see it has a little bit of a little goofy curve there. Um, but that's just how the drawings said to make it, using the dimensions exactly as they were shown on the Boeing drawing. So that's what I went with. Now, so for each one of these uh, horizontal lines here, or I guess they look vertical in this view, um, I have a plane, which are showed or shown over here, and then I put a sketch on it that meets that meets each one of these transverse contours. So, now I have all of those contours, let's show this, and I made a surface, a boundary surface. Now if we go and we edit that real quick just to show you, it's very complicated because we have so many contours here, but now you can actually see them all, they're highlighted in blue, and I went in and I select each one all the way along, and then shows you the preview in uh, yellow here. Now you could actually even go in each one of these menus and select a type. I didn't want a type, I just want it to be a free-flowing curve. Um, really puts a drain on your system when you have so many contours and so much to display. Um, but you can see how it works. It starts back here and goes to the next contour, next one, next one, all the way up to the front. And right at the leading tip here, it's actually just a single point uh, in a separate sketch. And it leads down there. And then this line on the edge actually acts as a guide. Um, not sure where it is in here. Uh, but it guides the outside curve so that you get a nice tip at the front. Now if we could zoom in there. you can see that that curve at the front meets the tip, even though I don't have a contour right there. So now I'm just going to hide all of these again. We don't need to see them. And then I think I actually have to individually hide these sketches. You can even right click on a sketch if you can see it and you can just click hide. Now we have half of that contour made, uh, but it is infinitely thin. It doesn't have any dimension. This is not something that has any weight. Uh, if we go to evaluate and we go to, well, we can't go to mass properties because there's no weight. Uh, there's, there's nothing here. Um, it's an infinitely thin surface. So, the next step is, you can kind of see in the sheen there, the light, you can sort of see that there are a couple defects down in this corner. That's just how it's going to be. And if you were going to actually make this part, uh, you probably couldn't ask for much better than that. Um, you could probably form it out by hand, but that's, that's another thing entirely. Now we have this nice half contour. First thing I did, is I made it into a solid. Now the way I did that is I made a sketch that just mimics the outline on this top plane. And then I just did an extrusion up to surface. That's what the drop down was. And as the surface, I selected the surface we just made. And that makes it into a full solid. All right. Next thing I did was I just mirrored that solid over this middle plane. So now we have both halves. Then I use the shell feature up here. 
and I made it into an O40 thickness shell. Now the way a shell works is you click the shell feature and then you click the faces that you want to be deleted. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you select your thickness and just hit the check. Now it gave me that error because somewhere in here there's a section where the curve is smaller than O40 as a radius. Um, sometimes that will cause errors, in this case it didn't, a little bit lucky on that. But so there we go, now it's an O40 thickness, complex contour, we have curves going in many different directions. Then to put the windows in, I just made a sketch on the top, and a cut, and I mirrored it. Now we can't see through that because it still shows the surface, so I'll just right click that and click hide. And there we go. Now I don't want to save any accidental changes that I might have made, so I'm just going to click no there and discard changes in the assembly. Now that's just going to update the assembly, but there we go. That is a complex contour. Um, it took me many different tries to actually get this far. As you can see down here, it doesn't perfectly fit with this assembly. I haven't gone through all of those issues and fixed it. Uh, but I do know that this contour is correct. I might have to adjust that little radius at the tip, but otherwise it is correct. Now, like I said, you can use this for all sorts of different things. Um, wings that taper or change shape. Um, that's probably the most useful application, but also doors, you know, that would fit on a complex contour like this where we have you know, changing curves in this direction and also changing curves in this direction. Um, use it for all sorts of things. It is a little bit time consuming because you have to make all of those sketches, but when you are done, it will be exactly what you want. You can always add other curves, uh, which act as guide curves. I didn't do that for this part, and I might cover that in a future video. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, but they just guide the extrusion or the surface as it goes between the different contours. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for some of you. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.